What's going on fishy friends? All right, so down in the basement and let's take a look at the 20 long, which clearly I have been neglecting for a little while. Um, I had pulled out all the stem plants. I stopped dosing the EI fertilizers and uh, I let those crypts grow and sort of put those four new epistos in here. Um, I had planted that AR mini over there, which is gone. And the dwarf baby tears did not survive so well either. I am getting a chain sword and some dwarf hair grass sprouting up all the way over there, which came from, well, over here somewhere. But besides that, I've just been letting the Epistos sort of do their thing in this tank, and, well, clearly that was a mistake. Because, as you can see, this thing is riddled with algae. Um, what I tried to do to combat that was use light diffuser. Uh, egg crate light diffuser, there's a billion different names for this stuff. Look at that, there's still a tag on it. Plasticoat. Um, pl Plascolite, not Plasticoat. So, that is one way to theoretically cut down on the amount of light. Oh great, I, I just dropped that whole fixture in the water. That'll probably break on me now. Um, that definitely does cut down on the light, but obviously I still have something out of balance. Either too much light, not enough CO2, too much something else, too little something else, who the hell knows. And now I'm left with this. So we are going to try a hydrogen peroxide method of eliminating the algae. Um, I've not tried this before. I have tried spot dosing hydrogen peroxide um, to deal with algae in the past. But I have not tried a whole tank method. Uh, I don't know much about it, except for a bit of research I've done online. Uh, most of that info came from the plant -tank .net. Uh, somebody calls this the one-two knockout nuke punch or something as far as combating algae in a tank. Basically, you dose some hydrogen peroxide. I will figure out the exact dosage and make sure I report that later. Um, one of the suggestions is to keep the flow high when you're dosing the hydrogen peroxide to make sure that it gets dispersed fully around the tank. Uh, I'm running this Fluval. What is this one? A 305? Ooh, I can't get in there. Well, yeah, it's a 305 um, <clears throat> on this particular tank, but I have seen cautions about using her hydrogen peroxide and killing any ben beneficial bacteria in your filter. So I'm not going to go through the trouble of removing my BioMedia. What I am going to do when I end up doing this dosing is I will shut the flow from this filter, and what I'll probably do is grab... Uh, I don't know, I got extra filters everywhere. Uh, there's one. We'll use that canister filter without anything in it, just essentially as a pump, just to keep the water circulating in the tank. If anyone's interested, here's my pile O extra crap. Anybody uh, who's probably kept even just one fish tank uh, knows the amount of stuff you can accumulate. Um, in all honesty, that's that's only the beginning, and only one corner of my house full of stuff. That's uh, another tank, another tank, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, well, if anybody's interested, I can do another video on all the miscellaneous crap I have for this hobby uh, some other time. But what we'll do is we'll hook up another canister filter just to act as a pump and keep the water flowing in this tank. Um, and that'll be the plan to begin with. And I'll check back in a little bit later once I get going on this. All right, guys, so here we are a while later. I don't know how long it's been since I began shooting this video. Uh... Let's recap to refresh my memory. We got a 20 long filled with algae, and we're going to try a hydrogen peroxide treatment to fix it. First things first, what I did is turned my canister filter off, shut the valve, disconnected. Um, I'm going to remove all the biomedia, and this is as good a time as any to really clean out this filter, change the filter floss. I'm going to remove the biomedia, sit, in a, sit that in a bucket full of water I pulled out of this tank just seconds ago, and then I'm going to start the hydrogen peroxide treatment. So, let me get working right, on guys, this I just thought I'd show this. It's been quite a while since I've gotten around to cleaning this filter. Uh, so, I just got the biomedia out into the bucket of tank water. Even though I'm sitting in the sink, I am not using tap water for this. Very important, don't use tap water to clean your biomedia. Uh, the chlorine in the tap water 
will kill most of, if not all, of the beneficial bacteria that grows on that biomedia, which is the whole point of this filter. So anyway, that's how filthy even the biomedia is, and that's the cleanest part of the filter. Uh, let's see. Uh, a little more bio stuff. Uh, a little more again. Keep that biomedia wet while you're changing this stuff. And there's some... F you know, considering how long this has been in the tank, I'm sorry, in the filter, it's not as dirty as I thought it might be in all honesty. This is coming out of a dirted tank filled with algae. And I have actually seen filter flaws come out of my tanks look much dirtier than that. That's certainly not clean by any means. I am using a uh, box of polyfill. This is, I don't know, quilt batting, pillow material. This is, I don't know, a giant box of this, five pounds. I've had this for more than one year as it is already, and that'll probably last me a lifetime. So, let me keep on uh, keep on cleaning. I am gonna rinse my sponges. Um, that sometimes is okay to rinse in tap water. I'm still not a big fan of doing that because tank water is plentiful, and I will just use the tank water on the 20 long that this filter was working on. Let me keep cleaning this and I'll check back with the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, in the so tank. as we're reassembling, I have two compartments full of uh, polyfill. And the third compartment in this particular filter, I'm going to leave empty for the time being. That is where the biomedia will be housed later. But for this hydrogen peroxide treatment, I'm gonna leave the biomedia out. It will stay here wet in the bucket of tank water. Um, ideally, I should even put an air stone in here and keep the water circulating, but I'm only going to be, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. Everything should be okay as long as this stays wet with tank water. Uh, I might rinse it once or twice in some cleaner right, tank guys, water. So what I, I did go. is I primed my filter with my bucket, meaning I filled up the whole canister with tank water. And another good tip is to remove the outflow pipe and place it into a bucket when you're doing this all right guys so what I did was I added eight tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide to the tank and I'm gonna let the filter flow for 15 minutes before doing a big water change uh, after that I'm gonna give it a real big dose of Excel and hopefully I'll be algae free by this time uh, sooner or later all right, guys, it's been about 15 minutes. Uh, I'm in the middle of filling the tank back up after doing a very large water change. Uh, got to about 60, maybe 70% removed and adding back in. Uh, I did a pretty aggressive vacuum, really dug around on everything, tried to suck up any big pieces of algae that were stuck to anything and kind of get disturbed during this whole process. So we'll fill this back up. We'll let the filter get running and then we'll shut the filter back down a second time, add the biomedia back in, get everything running again, and give that big dose of Excel. All right, guys, that's about it. I just finished up the water change. I dosed some Flourish Excel, which I don't typically use since I run pressurized CO2, but uh, that Flourish Excel is an algicide, and that combined with that whole tank hydrogen peroxide treatment hopefully should uh, get rid of a almost all this algae good good portion of it's gone already there's a lot of it still hanging on some of the crypt leaves and then i just got a whole lot of aerial roots coming out of the bottom here which uh is just as ugly as algae um i don't think there's really much of a way i can deal with that short of trimming all that or pulling out the plants that it's all associated with as you can see i got two epistos left in this tank um i honestly only see one at a time and even during that heavy cleaning, I only saw one at a time, so it's nice to see at least those two right there. Uh, theoretically, that does still leave one body unaccounted for, but at this point in time, I am pretty positive I only have two survivors. After the last big problem in this tank, uh, this was the first tank I had a heater failure in a couple of weeks back. And then after that, I forgot to turn the flow on my filter back on after I first started shooting this video a couple of weeks ago, and ended up losing at least one episto. That might be part of the reason why it took me so long to finish doing this treatment and, uh, and actually shooting the video. I guess I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth after that first try. Wasn't even a try, really. Anyway, the two remaining fish seem to have handled the 
hydrogen peroxide treatment well. Um, granted, this is only minutes after the treatment, but as you just saw a few seconds ago, they're still in there. And uh, now I can sort of begin. I guess I'm going to have to do some major trimming and, uh, and sort of a major rescape in this tank. Hopefully get it back to something that it once used to be. Or uh, maybe even improve from there. So, we'll see what happens. We'll keep a good eye on this. On the plus side, since I haven't been doing anything over here, all the moss in this corner of the tank looks really, really good. Um, my intent was to eventually have that flower pot get covered with moss like that, hopefully as a potential breeding ground for some apistos. That is starting to happen on its own now that I've sort of not been doing much maintenance to this tank, so that's working out kind of well. Sometimes there's a, a nice benefit of ignoring certain things in the tank as they happen. And other times you just sort of get lucky and then there's those times you don't get so lucky. Anyway guys, that's that. I'll check back in. Don't forget to check Rich's Fishes on Instagram. Comment, rate, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button below. I'll talk to you guys soon. Alright guys, here we are about 24 hours later. Well, maybe 18 or 19 hours later. Anyway, it's the following evening, and the tank is looking a hell of a lot better. Um, it ain't perfect, but it is much, much, much better than it was. The Epistos, uh, well, at least that one is still looking very good, so the treatment doesn't appear to have affected the fish in any negative way. Uh, there is still a bit of algae on some of the crypt leaves. Um, I think I'm going to try another dose of Excel and uh, see how that works out. But for the most part, it looks a lot, lot better. Uh, most of the algae that was down in the front is gone. All the algae that was intertwined over here and all of this moss is pretty much gone. Uh, I think the biggest negative in this tank now is just the sheer number of aerial roots that are, are just kind of making everything look messy. Um, that strand there behind the episto uh, off to the side and over there and and just that mess of, of knotted roots that are everywhere right now which definitely doesn't look so hot so I'm gonna still have to do a bit of work on this tank but uh, it's leaps and bounds better than it was before I did that hydrogen peroxide treatment yesterday so that apparently worked and uh, hopefully I can dial this tank back in and sort of get things back to where they used to be, where they need to be, where I want them to be. Hopefully I can also still find that second Episto that should be in this tank. Uh, as I saw yesterday there was definitely two left. Um, don't see the other one right now, but like I mentioned yesterday, I had only thought there was one in this tank anyway, so the fact that I even saw that second one yesterday was a nice surprise, and if it made it that far through all these problems, there's no reason why it didn't make it another day, and it's probably just hiding back there in the vegetation. All these aerial roots and uh, all these things that I don't love to look at here. The fish certainly don't mind. They love to go hiding back in there inside all that growth. They don't care if it's roots, roots or leaves or or what it might be. To them, it's uh, natural. It's a hiding spot. They feel comfortable in it. So I'm sure that second episto is in there somewhere. Or back there in the flower pot. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen these epistos really take to those flower pots. So I wonder, uh, wonder what changed their mind. I'm trying to look carefully to make sure I'm not missing any eggs back there. Oh, hi. Boy, the coloration on these guys is really popping. I've been so busy dealing with making the tank look better, I almost forgot about how good these fish look. Jeez, I wonder. There, there is still a chance that I'm uh, 
I'm missing a third fish that is still alive in here, and I'm too stupid to realize. Well, I'll keep a good eye on that. Doesn't look like anything too interesting is going on back there, except that one apista just hanging out in the flower pot. There's nobody in that flower pot there, which is the one I thought they would take to since it's kind of covered by the moss. Anyway, whole tank hydrogen peroxide treatment on heavy XL seems to have worked well. Alright All right, guys. guys, one day later again. So, this is 48 hours or so after the initial hydrogen peroxide treatment. Now obviously there is still some algae here, so it was not an end-all be-all. But, as you can see, some of the algae is uh, a reddish pinkish. Uh, I'm pretty sure that means it is dying, if not dead already. So, the treatment definitely served its purpose and definitely benefited some of my algae problems in this tank. Um, yeah, nothing's perfect, but uh, it did work pretty damn well. Um, I'm going to give another dose of Excel on top of the CO2 I inject in this tank. My drop check is showing uh, pretty dark green. Maybe I don't have quite enough CO2 in here, so I am going to increase my CO2 levels a tiny bit on top of the other treatments I've been doing. So all in all, I'd still say it's a pretty successful treatment. Um, if I was ever faced with another severe case of algae in a tank, I wouldn't hesitate to try this again. Worked well, didn't seem to harm any of the inhabitants in the tank, and uh, pretty much did what it's supposed to do. So, can't really complain. Alright guys, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you later.